morning folks. Welcome to Tappanoff Farm here in northeast Scotland. We've got a beautiful day, no sign of wind, which is fantastic after the last week of storms, Storm Arwen that came through the UK, hitting the east coast particularly. We had a blackout for five nights, no electricity. As a family though, we were absolutely fine. Luckily we've got our wood burning stoves in the house, which meant we could keep warm, which meant we could cook food. Um, we had water, of course, because we've got private supply. We don't need a pump to use that. So the only thing was it was very dark, especially with the short days we've got now here in winter in Scotland, getting dark around 4 p.m. Um, so it was early nights and uh, getting used to cooking and doing everything with torchlight and candlelight. We lost a few trees on the farm. One of the strongest storms we've had in decades here in Scotland. Didn't help that we had a lot of snow come down at the same time. We lost a big sycamore. One of the tallest trees we've got on the property came down, a Scots pine. We lost some Sitka spruce, uh, but nothing too bad. And luckily no fences were taken out, no buildings, nothing near the house. So we we're very lucky with that. Some people have had some very rough times so um, I hope everyone's doing okay out there and getting back to normal after the power cuts. So I'm up here in the north field with the sheep. Last time we were chatting with you guys, we had our Shetland Tup Jed visiting to hopefully get our Shetland news in lamb. Jed's since gone. Um, hopefully he's done his job in covering the sheep. We saw him having a few goes uh, with the ewes, so fingers crossed that means we'll get some lambs next year. He didn't stay on the farm as long as we'd liked, mostly because he decided to go for a bit of a wander. He broke out of the byre. We had the sheep actually inside the goat shed um, for quite a few evenings because of the severity of the storm. Jed decided that he, was, he had had enough of our sheep um, and bust through the wooden door and made his way over to a neighboring farm where there was a far larger flock of sheep. Luckily our neighbor was okay with this and he helped us retrieve Jed and get him back to ours before we then got Angus uh, who owns the sheep to come back and get him for us. We just decided to cut Jed's stay with us a bit short because we were not sure he was going to stick around with us since he learned how to escape and the draw of 20 or 30 ewes in the neighboring fields was just too much for him I think with compared to our three who probably weren't that interested in him. So yeah, not sure how it'll have gone, whether or not he had spent enough time with our ewes uh, to get any lambs next spring, but it's not our biggest priority. Uh, the, the goats kidding is, is more of our priority. And of course, Rosa and I are having a child next year. We slipped that bit of news into a vlog a couple of episodes ago, quite subtly. So thank you for everyone who noticed that and has been sending us congratulations and best wishes. Yeah, next year is gonna be a busy year, but we're very excited. Um, I can't wait to be a dad again. Our baby is due next May. What with kids and potentially lambs as well, it's gonna be a busy spring. So the sheep are up here in the north field. Um, we, we brought them up here after Jed left um, because while well, they love it up here, there's lots of tree cover for them to get out of the wind and the rain and the snow. So I think they'll be up here for the majority of the winter. So I've got to bring them up hay most days. There's a little bit of grazing left for them, but not too much, so we're just supplementing with some locally grown hay. But yeah, they're very happy up here, which is great to see. All right, girls, see you later. So today we're gonna be getting on with some different type of work that we don't usually do, which is building bridges. We've had a lot of rain over the last week. So our ditches are flowing very fast. We've got a lot of water on the farm. We've got ponds, we've got springs. We've got high water table areas. We're trying to slow that down in many ways as we can by adding more ponds and catchment areas. And because we're putting in these ditches and ponds, we have to put in bridges to get over them. Um, we've built bridges over some of the ditches over the last several years, ever since we started getting large livestock. When we had the cows here on the farm, for instance, we had to put in quite a few bridges to get the cows over the ditches. We didn't want them eroding the banks of the ditches and making it into a bog. So for instance here, I'm just about to walk over, we've got a wooden bridge. So today we're gonna to be starting to make another bridge and that is gonna be here in the new area of Forest Garden. We've got the overflow ditch, um, which takes overflow water from our large pond up at the top of the property. When that overflows, it goes two ways and one of them is coming down past our 
little wood-fired sauna that we've got up there and now past this new circular pond down straight line here past the goat buyer and into a council drain on the road and we've got lots of plans for slowing this down making use of it a bit more before it leaves the property but as you can see here the ditch is open with a lot of water passing down it at this time of year and over here through the hedge is another small area of forest garden and we we walk through the farm this way quite a lot and every time we have to jump over this um, ditch like so and through to what we call the duck forest garden because there used to be a duck house here and into the original forest garden which leads to the market garden and anyway it's a well used track and it would just be certainly easier for all of us if we had a nice solid bridge over this ditch so i think we're going to start work on that today so this pile behind me was a pile of forestry commission timber that we bought a good few years ago now uh, to cut up as firewood and we've been doing that very slowly over the years um, it's amazing actually how good this still is after, even though it's been sitting out in the rain so we will be using this mostly as firewood but some of the smaller pieces are very good for making these bridges these are very simple bridges just laying the full length which is about three meters down over the ditch um, sometimes we cut them but on the whole we just try and keep them that length maybe set down into the ground a little bit just to give them a ledge of soil to sit on and then we're going to cover the logs in a bit of chicken wire staple that on so that we've got some nice non-slip surface to walk on Bob's your uncle that's it really very simple we've already got a pile of logs that we've sorted um, and designated for use um, for bridges so ones that are quite small in diameter here we go um, so we've put these here knowing that we might need to take them north like we are today to make a bridge um, we've got another bridge planned um, on this section of ditch that goes past the goat buyer so log hefting time That was heavy. The difference between moving logs in the summer and winter is that now they've got a lot of rain in them. So they're a lot heavier than uh, other times when we've made these bridges in uh, drier weather. Anyway, one. One is the start. I think I might have to go and get some tongs, some forestry tongs. I think that's what you call them. That's what I call them. Um, they make moving logs much easier. I'll go and grab them. It doesn't need to be a very wide bridge, so we won't need too many. Maybe six? We'll see. Now, I hear you asking why are we using such heavy pieces of timber to make this bridge when we could be using things like pallets or other bits of wood that we might buy. We always start with what have we got here on the farm first before we buy anything. We've made bridges with pallets before uh, because we've always got pallets kicking around but they don't last long in my experience maybe a year or so and you're walking across your pallet bridge and you hear a crack so we want something that's going to last and these bridges like the one on this main pathway here that we built in about 2015 they've lasted all that time without any sign of breakages there's been a bit of decay obviously because it's untreated wood they've had years of us walking over them uh, they've had cows and goats walking over them and they've even had a one and a half ton excavator going up and down over them so yeah 
the super sturdy. So yeah, we're happy to do the muscle work in carrying them. Once they're in place, they don't go anywhere and they take a lot of weight. And they look really nice too. They blend in with our love of the rustic aesthetic. So these are the forestry tongs. Come in a couple of different sizes. These ones are made by Husqvarna, but they're great. We, I use them a lot when I've been felling large trees to move around the trunks or when I've been chopping up that pile of firewood just to get, just to be able to pick the logs off the pile. Takes all the weight out of the log, much easier on your back, especially like me, if you've got a long back, that gets sore often. These are great. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they just pinch around the log. With two of them, you can, with, with a friend, you can lift one large log between the two of you very easily. Um, and working on your own, you can, pick up one end of the log with these and then drag it along the ground or lift it up about waist height. So that's what I'm gonna do until Rosa gets back from town uh, and hopefully will give me a hand. But I'll see how I go by myself for now. So that's seven logs up. I think that'll do it now. Um, like I said, it doesn't need to be too wide. Um, ideally, it'd be great if we could get the BCS and trailer over, which I think we should manage on that. Maybe I'll bring one more up, we'll see. Um, next step really is just to move the logs around a bit, see where they fit best together, and then it'll be covering it in chicken wire. Rosa come back from town just in the nick of time to help me with the last log. <laughs> so we're gonna just do a little bit more before we break for lunch. Gonna just shift the logs around a bit, see where they fit in best. So we found an old stock fence that was hiding under the grass with a nasty few lengths of barbed wire on it. So I'm just gonna go and get the wire cutter so that we can peel that back out the way. All right, so wire cut, logs jigged around a bit, starting to fit together a lot better, but um, we're starting to lose the light a bit now. So I'm gonna call it a day and we'll get back on with this tomorrow. Just 
scrub up some chicken wire and then some kind of varying lengths of tree stake. Um, we're gonna use these to fill in the gaps and just kind of hold the logs in place before we wrap the chicken wire around to really secure them. Alright, so we've got one section of chicken wire on the bridge so far and this is so that we don't slip. Chicken wire gives us good traction as we're walking over the bridge. Also helps hold the logs together. We've put some wooden stakes around the edges of the bridge just to hold it all, especially on the downward slope. And we've filled in some of the gaps because obviously the, the timber is wavy edged, it's not, the per it's not perfectly straight. We've had to fill in gaps with old wooden tree stakes and they're also held in place by chicken wire. Mostly using fencing staples and then we'll also get a staple gun just to bang some in here and there. And so we just gotta get another section of chicken wire and then we're pretty much done. Alright guys, we've come to the end of the day and the end of our job. Do you think we're done? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. He's definitely strong. Mm -hmm. Strong and sturdy. <laughs> Enough to take our weight and yeah. wheelbarrows and goats and hopefully you'll be able to get the PCS and trailer yeah. over this. Mm -hmm. um, really simple, we have pretty much just thrown some logs over a ditch. <laughs> but it's simple is good. Yeah, it's yeah. good to keep things simple. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing the difference it made between having the logs down and then actually putting the chicken wire on it went from being like a very dangerous Slippy. thing that you shouldn't stand on yeah. uh, to being like one piece yeah. and yeah really grippy so that's that's a definite necessary in this method good for cleaning <laughs> your boots off on yes yeah and then you build up the mud on the bridge <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean that is going to happen yeah. if you if you look at the other bridges mm -hmm. that we've built in this method there is a layer of mud and grass growing on top and yeah guess that it's going to be slightly detrimental because over time it will start maybe rotting the wood but it also mm. blend, makes it blend in yeah makes it look more natural mm. and yeah i think they they look really great yeah for us these were waste materials around the farm so it's just really great to use them and now not to have to jump over the ditch all the time yeah. it's getting increasingly slippery here a bit perilous for short-legged people especially <laughs> Uh, we've um, we've built up the ends of the bridge with soil. We've just been digging out the ditch further above us because we're mm. wanting to put in some 
different shapes in this ditch rather than it being a straight long ditch we want it to slow the water down so we're going to be designing and making some leaky dams or, or check dams in the future yeah. so we were able to basically start that project already by removing the soil and um, piling it on um, piling it up at the ends of this bridge so that we can we've got we've got a nice kind of sloping ramp, ramp. Yeah, yeah ramp that's the word <laughs> so we've got to get there. <laughs> so we've got a ramp up and a ramp yeah. down off of the bridge all right guys i hope you enjoyed today's vlog as always thank you so much for watching mm -hmm. if this is your first time to the channel mm -hmm please do hit subscribe. It's great to have your support and it lets us know that everyone's interested to see more videos. Give it a like. Hope everyone's well out there and until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye. See ya.